Hello, I'm Rosemary Rogers, an independent specialist nurse consultant in ear care who is completing a doctoral degree about earwax accumulation. This presentation is provided to increase your awareness of current good practice in ear care. For the past 22 years, I've written ear care courses for healthcare workers and audiologists, established a national primary ear care centre, provided an ear care consultation service, and taught clinical staff from around the world. Ears and communication are a very important part of living. You also can make a difference to the quality of life of people by considering the person with the ear problem and by using procedures available in the primary setting so preventing unnecessary referral for secondary care. Who are these people with ear problems? You see them every day. They are people who struggle to hear conversation, who misunderstand the spoken word, whose hearing aids are whistling, who withdraw from conversation and sit alone. Their hearing problem is frequently caused by an accumulation of earwax or a minor ear infection in the external ear canal and it could be easily resolved by following a procedure that can produce immediate relief. Ear problems are found worldwide and can be caused not only by accumulation of earwax but also by any or a combination of the following. Genetic makeup, age, skin type, anxiety, stress, medication and lifestyle. Lack of knowledge about ear care causes people to search for remedies for their blocked ear problems. Many of the ways they choose are not effective and may damage the skin of the ear canal or even perforate the tympanic membrane. Here are some facts about the external ear canal and earwax which is produced in the first third of the ear canal. This canal has a self-cleaning mechanism that mobilises the earwax out of the canal to be wiped away during normal washing. The ear canal bends where the cartilage and bony areas meet, so it's important to straighten the ear canal prior to viewing or treating the ear. This will be demonstrated later in the DVD. Excess sticky wax may accumulate and block the ear canal, while excess dry flaky wax and dry ear conditions can cause irritation in the ear. A small amount of ear wax at the entrance to the ear canal helps to lubricate the skin and is beneficial in reducing dust entering. Water trapped behind the plug of ear wax in the ear canal is frequently the cause of ear infections as bacteria can thrive in warm, dark, moist conditions. Ears that are prone to infection should be kept dry Older people's ceruminous glands produce less sebum, an oily substance, and hence they have drier, harder earwax, which is slower to migrate out of the ear canal. Excess earwax in younger people may be related to an hereditary problem. Anxious and stressed people often produce wetter wax. The problems caused by excess earwax are discomfort, deafness, itchiness, tinnitus, vertigo, an irritable cough caused by pressure on the cough reflex nerve in the inferior ear canal. These problems are exacerbated by attempts at self-clearing the ears. The associated hearing loss may cause frustration, stress, social isolation, paranoia or depression, where the person has other health issues such as physical, mental or learning difficulties or a language barrier in understanding, the basic difficulties become accentuated. A person who wears hearing aids and produces excess earwax requires regular earwax removal as earwax is the cause of 80% of hearing aid repairs and it can also cause an acoustic feedback whistle which reduces hearing ability. All these people will require early external ear canal clearance in order to maintain their quality of life. Clearing the earwax is only necessary when it causes a problem or if it's impossible to correctly examine the ear. All these people may have similar earwax problems, but require different approaches to resolve the ear problem. It's important that those offering ear care are also skilled communicators and can advise on future ear care of the ears and prevention of ear problems. It has been shown that by using an olive oil spray immediately prior to treatment, the health worker can easily remove the wax. This is preferable to exacerbating the hearing loss through extending the time the person is deafened by instilling drops over many days, some of which can cause irritation of the skin, prior to clearing the ears. 
The alternative secondary treatment is to remove the wax by microsuction, which generates noise levels up to 120 decibels. In the past, there was only one method of clearing wax from the ear canal that treated all people. The manual plunger syringe has been used since the 16th century AD. This continues to be the method still used in many countries. Evidence that use of this type of syringe caused damage to ears included permanent tinnitus, perforation of the tympanic membrane, deafness and chronic infection, leading to litigation was recorded in a survey conducted by the Medical Defence Union in 1997. The manual plunger syringe is no longer accepted as a method of ear care. The ear canal can now be safely and easily cleared by a suitably trained health worker or audiologist wearing a headlight and using a combination of instruments and irrigation. Irrigation should be performed using an electronic variable controlled pressure irrigator which is research proven for use in ears and complies with the required medical devices standards. The electronic irrigator is designed to be used in conjunction with other instruments and not alone. Improved ear care treatment is also enabled by the health worker or audiologist knowing each patient's past medical history and previous ENT problems or surgery, any allergies and present prescriptions for anticoagulant drugs. You have seen the current practice of excellence in earwax removal and we are sure that you will now have increased safety in mind and a vision of how your practice can be enhanced. By caring for the person with the ear problem rather than just the ear, your future practice will be rewarding for both you and your patients and improve the quality of life for many people. The benefits of encouraging routine ear checks for all age groups where earwax problems have been identified has been explained. It has been demonstrated how you can make a difference in both the time and financial savings for both the service provider and patients by preventing minor ear problems becoming major problems which, will, which then will require secondary care intervention. The need for all healthcare workers performing earwax removal to be confident in practice has also been demonstrated. This can be achieved by attending excellent training in the combined use of instruments and irrigator and continuing to update learning.